Hi, it's Tuesday, and if you think that the DJI digital FPV system is the only digital FPV system in the world, you are kind of mistaken. Few weeks ago, I was contacted by the company called the Hobby Porter, and they said that, hey, we would like to send you for testing the T12. T12. T12 arrived, and T12 looks like this. This is the transmitter, this is the receiver, the big receiver, because there is also a small receiver. There is a camera, some antennas and... and yeah. And this is a Chinese, low cost, relatively low cost at least, um, idea how to do the digital FPV and control link system. It already was kind of showed by the Bruce Simpson on the RC model reviews. This is my, my, my part on the device. This is not the review. I will, I will, before I will try to make a re review, I really want to put it on an aeroplane and uh, not on a drone because of the reasons, but on an airplane, this means that I would have to really build something to put this thing on. Uh, mainly because it's kind of too bigish, even the smallish one uh, is too bigish to be put anywhere, uh, anywhere else, uh, including the, the rather old generation camera and the, the thing that you, used to, that you used to control your drone. This time, however, today let's let's take a look at what it is and what it is what it is this is an integrated uh, rc link telemetry downlink and fpv system it uses a special camera with they say that this is the serial port i doubt this is really a serial port or maybe i don't know there is of course a receiver that by default is let's say configured with the plugs you can use to connect this to pixhawk or but also to anything else you want because it can output the ppm it can output the s bus and uh, and something else you use your smartphone placed in this um in this not the best contraption in the world to have the fpv fit on your smartphone and of course you have two gimbals some buttons some switches and this is really mimo multiple input, multiple output, because both the transmitter and the receiver are using two separate antennas. I will not go into uh, details about how stuff is built. Um, I can only say that this is the 2.4 gigahertz uh, uplink and downlink. They unfortunately scrapped, removed laser or not laser or the markings from this chip over here. Uh, let me see if you will be able to see it. This chip over focus. This chip over here. So no idea what kind of RC 2.4 gigahertz link is really used to, let's say, put everything into the air and make it work. So it's um, it's a big unknown. Um, on the other hand, what we know that. Hmm, what we know that this is using uh, the Bluetooth and some serial connections because let me you see okay we get the cable and we get the we connect the cable over here and this is how it's supposed to transmit the video feed from the transmitter to your smartphone and so far so good if I would have to say something about how the transmitter looks like. Um, it's rather slightly different um, design that we are used to have in our hobby. The gimbals are rather um, cheapish plastic, looks like almost like the gimbals in the fly sky. Uh, I, I6 radio. The buttons, however, on the other hand, have this rubber protective, so maybe they are even waterproof, who knows. On the other hand, the buttons does not really look uh, butter, mm, they, uh, waterproof. There is this thing which probably can act as the third axis for pan and tilt on the camera. And, uh, and yeah, as a thumb device. Yeah, I can see this thing work as a 
thumb device. Uh, as a, for the pinching, probably not, but still there is one, one reason that probably nobody will ever try to put it on the FPV Razer and not because you have to use your smartphone to watch uh, the feed, but this, this in the moment. What we can do right now? Um, we can... Oh, you see? There is an application. There is a bunch of applications that you can use to... Okay, you can use, for example, this is SkyDroid FPV that used to give you the FPV feed. Let me connect the... Oh, it's beeping because there is no, there is no signal received. Let me connect the power to the receiver. Um, it, for unknown reasons, requires you to use 5 volts. This kind of sucks. And let's see if we will be able to get some kind of uh, FPV feed. No FPV feed so far. Hmm. So let's maybe turn this thing off. Funny fact, I, I had FPV fit on this before, only now it decided to die. So maybe now, please go. Oh yeah, you see, you see, we have, we have the FPV fit on your smartphone. Only if you, for example, use some kind of the goggles you can buy for your Android devices, the, the Google VR, VR something. You can also pretend you have the real goggles. And yeah, you see, you can see stuff based on the camera and the transmission is digital. You can see that it's digital because of the pixelation and the blurriness uh, on, the, on the image. The antennas and the transmitter are like, let's say, a few centimeters from each other and you see that the bandwidth is not really great. It's definitely not HD. You can see that it's already kind of blurry. I have no idea how this thing will behave on the longer distance. I will try to put this to a, some kind of a test, hopefully in a unknown yet time, but, but it works. This is the FPV part. Uh, oh, why? why i probably don't think anyone will ever use it as a success on with the success on the on the racer look how much of the delay there is oh you see yeah it's like half a second delay on the movement so for anything more energetic flight this is absolutely no go probably this will work kind of well in the big uh, uav that's used to i don't know to honestly i don't know maybe on an airplane this would work it's not a tragedy with the latency, but it's not really like what we are used to experience with the fully analog or, or even DJI digital. There is also, if we skip this, there is an application that you can modify the RC link for each channel. You can assign switches and reverse and set fail-safe values so you can more or less configure the receiver from your smartphone. You do not have to use anything on the transmitter, you just use your smartphone uh, via Bluetooth to set up everything. Uh, it has 12 channels, this is why the name T12, probably. There is also the hand settings, I have no idea what hand settings are when you can set some values or what the hell is maybe this is about modes who knows some other options when oh this is for example you can set the telemetry bow down link down link uh, baud rate this means that you can send ltm you can send mavlink something else there is also the tower version from the manufacturer of this to have the full telemetry downlink on your smartphone so yeah why not and you can also update device, uh, wireless update. Check update. Let's check if there is something. Yes, for example, I can update to firmware version 3.4. So it kind of, let's say, works, or at least works, but what should I do now? Um, yeah, anyhow. This is not really relevant in this in this moment. 
I have really, let's say, mixed feelings. In one hand, this is, this is a, a sign that yes, the competition to DJI does not really sleep. A lot of companies are working on digital FPV systems and the better uh, RC Link systems. And with current um, pressure to put something new on the market sooner or later, there will be a good competition to a DJI and to a Fat Shark Frostbite. Probably not this. Um, this is definitely not something built for the racers with the energetic flight mainly because the well let's say it's kind of not the size and uh, as i showed you the latency is not is not also the best but maybe it will work on an airplane who knows how how this will behave over there on the bigger drone as a secondary video system yes as a typical rc hobby modelist rather not but they say it has a lot of range, up to 20 kilometers. Maybe, who knows? I will really have to make some kind of the range test of the SkyDroid T12 digital FPV system, which it's special. It's definitely something, something else. Uh, oh, the problem. The problem I found. You cannot really position the tray for your smartphone on tablet however you want because if you do it in the wrong way it uh, it uh, touches or actually holds on this and this switch. Kind of strange position for the switches. Also, I don't know why the, the thumb switches are working like that instead of what we are used to up and down. But yeah, maybe. Who knows? I'm... Hmm. I don't know yet. Thank you for watching. Expect more materials on the SkyDroid T12 in the future. I cannot really say when, but definitely in the future. And until the next one. Bye bye.